Hey there, everybody. Welcome to today's video where we are going to dive deep into the world of natural hormone balance. So whether you're feeling like your hormones are hurting you without an invite or simply aiming to kind of get that perfect sync with your hormones, you're in the right place. We are about to uncover the secrets to like banishing those pesky hormonal imbalances and then embracing a life of vibrant health and vitality. So please grab your green smoothie, your water, your green juice, or simply just grab a pen and paper and let's embark on this journey together over the next about 10 minutes. So hormones are chemical messengers. They are in the body designed to actually produce good quality health and vitality. They're not meant to cause hormonal hell. I recently had a patient that said to me, when I get to the pearly gates of heaven, I have one question. And I thought, gosh, I really do want to know what this is. And she said, I'm going to ask if hormones are supposed to ruin my life. And I said, you don't have to wait that long. I will tell you right now that they are chemical messengers that are produced by various glands in the endocrine system. Things like your thyroid gland, your adrenals, your pancreas, your ovaries, the testes. And these messengers, they travel through the bloodstream to target cells and organs, not to wreak havoc, but to produce a wide range of physiological processes that will help maintain balance, homeostasis really within the body. And each hormone has its own role. It's critical in creating a specific response by controlling functions such as metabolism, growth, development, reproduction, mood regulation, and the list goes on and on. So like for example, if we are looking at something like the hormone insulin, which is produced by your pancreas, what that hormone's job or role is, is to help regulate blood sugar. Now it does that by grabbing glucose and pushing it into the cells for energy production. So for example, when you eat food, all food actually breaks down into glucose or sugar. Some foods are just a little bit more efficient at it than others, like a donut versus an apple. So when it breaks down into glucose or sugar, it goes from the gut into the bloodstream and it acts like shards of glass. So that triggers, there's a feedback mechanism and that triggers the pancreas to release insulin. And insulin, I think of everything in pictures. So insulin is kind of like a pickup truck. It's going to grab that insulin or grab that glucose. And it's going to toss it in the back seat and bring it all the way down to your cell again for energy production. So another example would be thyroid hormones. Those thyroid hormone four is produced by the thyroid gland. Critically important, it still does have to go through a conversion in order to ultimately control metabolism, energy expenditure. So hormones, like I said, they do work through that feedback loop or feedback system where the level Levels of hormones are regulated by signals from the brain, other glands, even target organs. So when hormones levels deviate from their optimal level, remember we have an optimal level and then we have that they're outside an optimal level and then we have a medical range. This is typically where they're going to say you're positive with that level. But if we're optimal and outside of that, but we're not triggering a medical, I mean, at what range do we want to raise our hands and say something's wrong with these hormones? Because when they get outside of optimal, they can create an imbalance balance, create health issues. And many things factor into this diet, stress, sleep, environmental exposures can all influence hormone levels. And that's really what we're going to dive into today. So overall hormones are crucial for maintaining your body's internal balance, coordinating its functions. They're meant to be your friend, not your foe. You're supposed to have hormone health, not go through hormone hell. And by understanding how these hormones work, how they are supported through proper balance, through lifestyle factors, lifestyle choices, it's really going to help to benefit you and produce optimal health and well-being. So there are some foods that I want you to think of for foods for hormone balance. One, this is why I have a green smoothie. I want to get leafy greens every single day and I don't want to eat a salad. So I stick them into my smoothie. So think things like spinach, kale, collards, greens, that's all that's in mind. They are rich in folate, vitamin K, magnesium, and leafy greens really support hormone production and then metabolism of those hormones. These also contain a myriad of phytonutrients that help to regulate things like estrogen levels. The second set of vegetables I truly love, I love cruciferous vegetables, things like you don't need to eat them all, but I love all of them. And if only tried cooking things like Brussels sprouts one way, you cook something like that wrong and it's gonna taste like baby food. You cook Brussels sprouts correctly and they might go on your favorite list too. So these cruciferous vegetables, they contain compounds that support liver detoxification which aids in the clearance of excess hormones from the body. Your liver is crucial when it comes to your hormones. Another favorite of mine would be berries. They're low in sugar. So really any berry, blueberries and strawberries, raspberries, they are all rich in antioxidants, which antioxidants reduce inflammation. They reduce oxidative stress. And that ultimately is going to support hormone balance. 
And then we want to layer in some lean protein. So things like chicken, turkey, fish, tofu, legumes, these provide essential amino acids, which are really necessary for building up of hormones or the synthesis of hormones, as well as tissue repair. So there are a few things in addition to food that I love. If you haven't ever tried adaptogens, you need to look into it because things like ashwagandha, which is known for its ability to help you manage stress, reduce anxiety, it helps to balance out cortisol levels, which is ultimately going to support overall hormonal equilibrium or balance. Rhodiola is another on top of my list. This adaptogen helps the body adapt to stress, which is going to promote what we all want, hormonal balance. This possesses anti-inflammatory, antioxidant properties. It aids in stress reduction and hormone regulation. So think about getting good quality foods in, some adaptogens, and then your gut is truly the gateway to to the health of your whole body. So you're not going to just end up with hormonal health and balance by looking at maintaining good gut health. It's going to help to affect everything. So two things, probiotic rich foods and fiber. So probiotic rich foods, you can take a probiotic. I do every single day, but you should also think about incorporating these types of foods. So things like maybe a non-dairy yogurt, like a coconut yogurt, you could do kefir, you could do kombucha. If you've never tried making your own kombucha, it is kind of fun. You should look it up on the internet and it's so cheap, pennies compared to what you would spend if you're buying the kombucha from a grocery store. And then fermented vegetables, they contain beneficial bacteria that support gut health and enhance, again, the proper metabolism of hormones. Fiber, especially for you women, is critically important and fiber can be found in fruits, vegetables, whole organic, please, if you're gonna do any whole grains, make sure that it's organic, non-fortified. These produce bowel regularity and help to eliminate excess hormones from the body. And if those hormones are not eliminated, they're going to get reabsorbed. Now in the past, at least in my lifetime, fats got a very bad rap. And I went through the whole thing where it was like low fat, no fat was the way to go. And that is really going to wreak havoc on your hormonal health if you don't get good quality fats in. So some of my favorites, avocados, you should eat a half to a full avocado every day. They're rich in monounsaturated fats, vitamin E, they support hormone production, and they have anti-inflammatory properties. Nuts and seeds, so things like almonds, walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds, they are excellent sources of omega-3 fatty acids, phytoestrogens, which can really help to balance your hormones. And then fatty fish is really important. Salmon is top of my list, but also mackerel, sardines, if you can handle that, they provide omega-3 fatty acids, EPA or DHA, which are crucial for the building or the making of hormones, and it reduces overall inflammation. So raise your hand if you have tried a fad diet. <laughs> it definitely is tempting when we see that in 10 days, we could change our entire life. I will tell you, nobody gets in shape in 10 days alone or moves their teeth with braces or loses weight in 10 days. So just remember fad diets, they come in go for a reason. We've got to find lifestyles that are going to serve you forever because things that like extreme diets that are low in calories, um, excessively restricting certain food groups, that can disrupt hormone balance. It can lead to imbalances. It can lead to metabolic issues that can take a long time to correct and turn back around. Find something that you're like, I'm going to start here. I want to try this and I can stick the landing, meaning you're going to keep it in your day-to-day -day routine. Because the point isn't to balance your hormones. The point is to keep your hormones balanced. The point isn't to get in shape. The point is to stay in shape. So that brings me to workouts. You can actually over-exercise and engage in these really high intensity workouts. And especially without adequate rest, it's going to like blow up your cortisol. It's going to disrupt your hormone balance. And we really need to be focusing on, again, balance, not these extremes from extreme fat diets to extreme workouts. And especially for you women that are in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you really want to be including strength training along with cardio and flexibility exercises. So as we age, strength training becomes even more important to help to balance our hormones and strengthen our bones as we age. So when it comes to cardiovascular exercise, cardio, aerobic activities like walking or jogging is fine, cycling, swimming, anything that you love and you don't have to love doing it. I got on the Peloton today. It's one of my favorites. I had no desire to get on. And so I practiced the low bar method and I'm like, just get on and spin. Don't worry about working out. 
And of course I, I had a great workout. So, you know, even when you're just like, I got on and just moved my legs, that does improve blood circulation. It is going to reduce stress and it is going to help with hormone balance. So movement of the body is key, not necessarily taking on these extremes. Strength training, like I said, weightlifting, you, you could just use body weight. It builds muscle mass, increases metabolism, improves insulin sensitivity, and promotes hormone health. And then flexibility, gentle stretches, yoga, Pilates, those things improve flexibility. They reduce muscle tension. They promote relaxation and they contribute to hormone balance. And then stress management. There are so many of these from mindful meditation, guided imagery, progressive relaxation, deep breathing yoga, the list goes on and on. Just find something that you like and enjoy. So I personally, I don't like yoga. I would rather mow the grass with the scissors than, <laughs> than go do yoga. So it's just off my list. I've tried it, I've given it a good go, I've practiced it many times and I still don't like it. But I do like meditation. I do like walking in nature. I do like breathing exercises, get on YouTube and you can put in like meditation breathing exercises. There's so many out there, diaphragmatic breathing, alternate nostril breathing. It activates the body's relaxation response. It lowers cortisol and promotes hormone balance. I also love journaling. So again, if you go to the internet, you could find probably 200 different stress management techniques. Just find a few, find one maybe that you enjoy and that you can stick to on a regular basis. If you haven't heard it before, let me be the one that tells you now, good sleep is critical. I'm not sure that we can outrun good sleep. I'm not sure any of these things are going to be as effective as they could be if your sleep is terrible. Now, I know some of you aren't sleeping and you're like, I'm doing everything and I'm trying. So the main things that you need to lean into as you're working on getting your sleep habits back, because sometimes our hormones wreak havoc with our sleep patterns. So here's where you got to start. A regular sleep schedule, create a relaxing bedtime routine, start to look forward to sleep, optimize your sleep environment, keep it cool, keep it dark, keep it quiet. And the last hour before you go to sleep, I really want you to try to get off your phones. Please try to get away from the TV and really try to wind down and pamper yourself. And I love things like an evening shower or a bath. I love a book. I love having music on in the background, candles as I relax into it. And then even reviewing the day in my mind, like what went really well? What do I have to be thankful for, for today? And then even doing things like relaxation techniques. You could jump on the internet, jump on YouTube and find different progressive relaxation techniques. I'm telling you with a routine and limiting screen time, if you haven't done that already, it is going to be a game changer. If you do have to be on your phone at the end of the day, or if you're like, oh darn it, I've got to check in with a child or make sure somebody's headed home. I totally get it. An hour before you go to bed, use blue blocker glasses. You're going to look like an idiot. <laughs> you can get them on Amazon and it'll look weird. But if you need to use your phone, please put on some blue blocker glasses because the blue light emitted from them, it disrupts the production of melatonin and melatonin is essential for good quality sleep. So, okay, let's land this plane. Hormones can be your heroes. I promise you, not your hell raisers. We have journeyed through a lot of things here today from the leafy greens to the adaptogens, to the healthy fats, to uncovering ways to really develop hormonal harmony. So remember, achieving the balance is not about perfection. It's about progress. You don't have to do all of these things every single day, but you've got to move the needle. So maybe Maybe sip on some herbal tea, strike a yoga pose. If you like yoga, every small step counts towards reclaiming your hormonal health. So here is to nourishing your body, calming your mind, and embracing the beautiful symphony and balance that is your hormones. So until next time, stay vibrant, stay balanced, keep rocking those hormones like the champions that you are.